Roger Waters, welcome to Peru. Thank you. It's been 11 years since your last visit. Uh, you come here with a new album and you've been in other countries in our region. And in each country, I've heard you speak about political issues mm. and defend human rights. What uh, is your message going to be in Peru? Um, well, I only arrived this morning. Yeah. You know, what I do when, uh, when I arrive in a country is um, I, I remember what it was like the last time I was here and I, I remember what people were concerned about. Um, so I bear that in mind and then I start asking drivers and, and um, interviewers for TV stations <laughs> what's going on and what the situation is. When I was here before, 11 years, is it really yes, that long? Yes. Um, I, on my mantelpiece at home in Hampshire in England, I, in fact I'm going to get somebody to take a photograph of it because I might, I might get newspaper to print it. I've got a very small uh, porcelain facsimile of the inflatable pig that I had here last time. Mm. And uh, oh, so geez. it's got everything that was written on it by Peruvians. All mm -hmm. the graffiti is on this tiny little thing and it sits on my mantelpiece in my kitchen. And as I recall, the major concern when I was here before was how badly uh, the indigenous people of Peru were discriminated against by the settler colonials, wherever they may have come from, whether they were the Spanish or the whatever. That seemed to be the major concern. And that is what is written all over my little pink pig. Well, you also remember Peru nearly every day with that little pig. Yeah. And uh, I remember the pig, yes, algae. It said uh, all Peruvians are equal. Say no to discrimination. Are you planning on oh, having... Oh, do you yeah? remember it then? Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah it did. Do, do you plan on having algae telling something in your concert? Um, the standard pig that we use Um, outdoors now, mm -hmm. uh, it has one overriding message on it, which is um, stay human, So, which translates into other languages very easily. It was based for me on a book uh, that was written by an Italian journalist who died in Gaza. And so originally I saw it, it was Restiamo Umani. Mm -hmm which is Italian, but I, so I've taken that thing. So he, so that pig floats around with that. I think it has a, um, there's a caveat to stay human because I think we have a picture of an exploding you know, nuclear weapon behind it because my message really is stay human or die because if, if we can't find the capacity within ourselves to empathize with other human beings, other homo sapiens. Um, and if we allow the people who are running the world in, in all their idiocy um, to go on running the world, organizing things as they are, uh, it will be destroyed very, very quickly. Uh, so we've, we've got to figure out that our capacity to love, love each other across international and ideological borders Uh, is the only thing that will save us. No amount of building walls on the Mexican border or bombing brown people in foreign countries will save us. So we have to decide whether we, as a species, want to survive, survive, survive. for a couple of hundred years or a thousand years or ten thousand years or however long uh, it might be. This depends entirely I nearly, I nearly went like that. It doesn't depend on that. It depends on this. It depends on, on our love. capacity to love. Yeah. There's a very emotional song in your album, The Last Refugee. Mm -hmm. And um, can we include in that song, in the feeling of that song, this crisis that Venezuela is going through? The, so many people fleeing from the crisis there. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, uh, yeah, the Sad. dilemma of all refugees everywhere all over the world. Uh, is the same, really. Um, my, my, my pet hobby horse at the moment and ha and is and has been made for the last few year, quite a few years, 15 years or so, um, neoliberal economics and how the Chicago School of um, Friedman and, and others 
um, invented the idea of deregulation and the idea that unfettered capitalist marketplace would somehow work and would um, free everybody from tyranny and, and, and it's clearly shown that it exacerbates all the problems, all the humanitarian crises are exacerbated by a free market. An unregulated free market is a disaster. Although in the case of Venezuela they are not liberals but uh, kind of so-called socialist but authoritarian. Well, yeah, they are. I mean, Venezuela is, is a complex question that I don't claim to be a great yeah. expert mm -hmm. at, but I do know this. I do know that the United States of America has been desperately trying to destroy Venezuela um, since the Second World War and maybe even before, like it has most of South America. Mm -hmm. It's been a hugely malign influence. And when it doesn't get its own, when it can't buy a country, by taking it over and investing in it and creating debt, and which is how most most of the uh, kind of um, American hegemony has been based upon that principle. Yeah. Occasionally they can't do it, and then they use muscle, Granada, or you know, or and then, or, and, or well, obviously you know, Chile in these early seventies. All of those coups were. Yeah, you remember Victor Jara in the National Stadium. I did I yesterday, very, yeah. Yes, very emotional. And when he was killed there. When, when yeah, Donald, I know yeah, this. When Donald Trump was sworn in, you said, you declared, the resistance begins today. How do you see the state of that resistance? Um, you know, what's happened, I believe, is that it's becoming easier, slightly, only slightly easier, um, to actually see what's happening politically in the United States of America and to see that actually we've known for many, many years that there's no semblance of democracy in America. Everything is bought and paid for. You can buy Congress people now. And now that they are Here also. stuffing okay. Yeah, they're <laughs> stuffing the Supreme Court in the United States, yeah, which is the final with 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 right wing, yeah, yeah. with um, right wing justice. Well, we have this uh, conservative, speaking about con people that are very conservative or right-wing, well, there are people that really believe in these ideas. For example, here in Peru, as we talk, there's a demonstration going on by parents that, is, that they say, don't mess with my kids. They don't want the Ministry of Education to teach about the gender approach, equal opportunities for boys and girls. They consider that the ministry is promoting uh, homosexualism. But how to address those Parents, I mean, it might be thought control, but it's also kind of a belief. How to tell them, well, this is not that way. Well, it's very difficult. Yeah. Um, again, I can't speak specifically mm -hmm. about Peru because I don't live here and I don't, and I don't speak Spanish and, and on and on and on. So I'm supremely ignorant. But I do know how things work in the United States and in the UK and over most of Europe. And by and large, the mainstream, mainstream media and all the TV is all the TV. owned. All the TV is owned by corporations, and by a, a few and a few individuals who control those corporations, and and, and so we are living in a Orwellian dystopia um, where where there is a ministry of truth, and they feed a narrative to the people. And because the people are so ill-educated, because there's no education system in the United States to speak of, there's no money in public education. There's a very small elite get educated and go off to the Ivy League colleges. And a bit like the UK has always been, where it's, it's such a surprise always when you look at a cabinet, particularly in a Tory government, and see how many of them were educated at Eton or Harrow. So um, what am I trying to say? Um, but you grew up. We, we have to search out any real news, any actual real news, by finding it on the internet in websites like The Intercept, which is actually run out of, out of Rio de Janeiro by Glenn Greenwald. Well, speaking about Brazil, you criticized Jair Bolsonaro, no, now president elect, and uh, the reaction was mixed. Some people applauded, others booed. Were you surprised by the reaction? Um, 
No. I wasn't surprised at all. You know, the, pe the people who vote for Bolsonaro or Trump or, f or Farage in, in England, or, you know, or Le Pen or Orban in Hungary or all of these neo-fascists are coming up. They vote, they vote for them for the same reason people voted for Hitler in, in Germany in 1933. Hitler was democratically elected. Elected, yes. So are we... By the good folk who believed that he would make Germany great, great again. again. <laughs> That's exactly what Are we in that sold. part of history again? Are we repeating? Okay, you know, it's, it's possible. Previous years, it's yeah. possible. When they send me to prison, I want you to write in your paper or put on TV is that Roger says, yeah, we are, I'm in prison. Or when my website or anything I say disappears off the internet because Mark Zuckerberg has decided who is in league with the CIA and, and so are Google and YouTube. So they, they and these, these organizations are supremely powerful because they're how most people get their information. Yes. Because most, I don't, I don't know if you've noticed this, but where I come from, a lot of young people are entirely <laughs> All addicted the time. to this. Yes. And they and they believe it. Yeah, fake news. They they yeah. they believe a number of they believe they come to believe very weird things. You only have to be involved with a rock show to see that these children are so crazed that they watch this huge spectacle on an iPhone mm -hmm. when they're actually there. They don't put it away. I know they are in the middle and of a party. And become engaged in it, yeah. and they're texting their friends, going, yes. "You should be here." Yeah. But it's such bull or the, but or the friend might be next to them and they're still <laughs> exactly but you see how powerful it is yeah. and how insidious and how addictive but we might and how have dangerous thought that technology would have brought people together which is not happening so the question would be is this the life we really wanted no of course it isn't and that that the record that i made is based upon a very long poem that i wrote Second time Bush George W was elected. When he was re-elected, I was so disgusted. So at 2004, yeah, his second time, 2004, the hanging chad was lodged. This was after he had criminally, along with Blair and a number of others, he invaded Iraq. Yeah on falsified evidence. No web well, so we are living in a very strange world where everyone in the world now knows that they falsified the intelligence to give them the excuse to invade Iraq. They pretended two things. One, they pretended against all the evidence from Hans Blick and others, mm -hmm. from all, all the UN inspectors. They pretended that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, which he didn't. And they had no evidence that he did. And there was a ton of evidence that he didn't. And they also pretended that he'd had something to do with uh, the attack in New York on 9-11. And that he was in league with Al-Qaeda. None of this Happened. was true at all. So they just... Now, why, why, so why, why did Bush and Blair go in and destroy Iraq? Iraq is... It is a failed state now. It's, it's, well, it's just a complete disaster, as is Libya. Why? Why do they do this? You what, are part of, of this movement, BDS. Do you know why no? I think? No, Sorry, why? Tell me, yes, yeah, sure, please. Money. Oh. There's a lot of money in it. Oil. There's a lot of money in it. So, and so there's a huge industry pushing for war all the time. And it, may, it sounds like a conspiracy theory, but it's not. You look at the numbers. And it is there. You are speaking about war. You are part of this movement, uh, boycott, divert, and sanction. Yeah. That uh, what tries to do is uh, that Israel follows the international rule and withdraws from the Palestinian mm -hmm. occupied territories. But some, and you are also going to meet with the Palestinian community, I understand, here in Peru. But some people see this activism of yours as being anti Semite. But your father was killed <laughs> fighting the Nazis. <laughs> it's the only response that they can have because there is no uh, there is no side to the Israel-Palestine argument. 
there is only one side. If you, if you subscribe to the idea that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in Paris in 1948 by the United mm -hmm. Nations was a good thing, and that we should tr follow those declarations, and that they should be part of international law and so on. If, if you believe that, then clearly, as night follows day, you believe that the Palestinian people should have equal human rights under the law, human and civil rights, equal to the Israelis. I mean, equal human rights based on not based rather on their religion or their ethnicity or their nationality. All human beings should have exactly the same rights. So if that's the case then, then and if the world believes that, then they have to say to Israel, you've got to stop this bull****. These people who you have invaded and occupied and stolen all their land and destroyed their towns and villages and you're attempting to destroy the whole culture and you're attempting to forcibly remove all of them from their land and make them go and live in Jordan or the Lebanon or Egypt or somewhere else. Um, you have to come back into the fold of the human race and behave with dignity and correctly and accept that they're not subhuman, that they're not worse than you. You cannot adopt a supremacist view like the Israelis do and say, we are special. They're a, they're a racist, apartheid, supremacist state, very like South Africa was back in the day. That, that particular campaign took 35 years to come to some fruition until Mandela turned from a terrorist rotting in jail to a great statesman and a great human being who, who when he got power, introduced the Truth and Reconciliation Committees, at the beginning. committees yes. uh, which were, uh, that, is the, that, is the, that is really Mandela's great legacy, is yeah. Truth and Reconciliation. Any other politicians that you admire? That I admire? Yes. Now? Yes. Oh, you mean? Or, no, uh, yes, now, for example. Um, well, let me think about that. Where I live, to some extent, Bernie Saunders, but he has to leave the Democratic Party because they are going to prevent him. They'll stop him like they did in the mm -hmm. last year. He should have been. If, if there was any sense of an alternative party, if the Democrats in the United States were an alternative to the Republicans, mm -hmm. he would have been the nominee, not Hillary Clinton, who's even more bloodthirsty warmonger um, than Donald Trump. So, um, you know, there's, there's um, I, I, a shame to say, I don't remember their names, but there's two or three women who've been uh, elected uh, to Congress in these midterms. One is Ocasio-Cortez ah, yes, from Alexandria. Brooklyn, from the 14th District. Yes. We have great hopes for this young woman. Um, it, if she doesn't become corrupted by the system, which most of them do, if she doesn't, her, there's the first um, Palestinian congresswoman, or Arab, no, Muslim. Muslim, Muslim. Muslim woman elected to Congress. I suspect she is incorruptible. She seems like a pretty powerful woman as well. And there was one other. So, you know, may, maybe there's a little hope that in, in the people who um, care about human rights and care about uh, a more equal distribution of wealth because it's insane in the states now that you know this point not one of one percent own everything and everyone else is poor that's why they vote for trump that's why the germans voted for hitler because they were in dire straits they'd been completely screwed after the first world war and they were living in misery well what the people who vote for Trump haven't realized, it, well, some of them have realized, is that Trump is the one that screwed you. <laughs> yeah.
you know, but they, but they, he tells them that it's not him, it's the Mexican rapists and the Chinese, which is, a, which is crazy. And corruption explains Bolsonaro's election also in Brazil. Um, I'm sure you, I'm sh uh, that, well, that, this explains it, is that people become, um, you know what happened, actually? Well, one thing, they've trumped up these charges mm. against Lula, so he's in prison, so he can't, because if he'd been running, he would have won. Another landslide. But he's sentenced because of corruption. What? He's sentenced on charges of yeah, corruption. Yeah, 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 but have you read them? Have you read the cases? Do you know what the evidence is against him? Do you? It's about an apartment at Triplex. The evidence yes, comes from you. two guys who are already convicted of corruption and did a plea deal with the judiciary to get their rap reduced by fingering Lula. There's, it makes no sense. At, have you looked at the plans of these crappy apartment? It's like Lula wouldn't be seen dead in it. And why would he get involved in a crappy, shady little deal like that? It's clearly trumped up. But, and it's trumped up to keep him in jail so he couldn't be in the election. Run. You invited Leon Gieco in Buenos Aires to your concert. Any plans of inviting a Peruvian performer for this uh, concert here in Lima? In here, well, yeah. you'd have to introduce me to some. I mean, not. I'm not well, saying that I want to go and have lunch. But um, Victor Hara, I knew. I knew about him because of his history and because of the story, and because the last time I was in Santiago, funnily enough, mm -hmm. Piñera was the president. Now again, yeah. And he's just been re-elected, yes. which is really kind of strange because I, I went and had an audience with him the first time there, uh -huh. and I kind How of denounced it? him on the radio. Yes. Well, he sat there and lied to me for an hour and a half. Oh, how, how and I said so on the radio later. I'll tell you he's the best lie. What, 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 what did he say? Well, I, I challenged him about um, police violence because there were a lot of uh, student unrest in Santiago at mm -hmm. the time in the university and the police putting down the um, demonstrations was brutal. I mean, the streets are littered with tear gas canisters and rubber bullets and good and so on. And there were a huge number of injuries as well. Well, not huge, 1,200. Uh, when he was sitting there, he looked me in the eye and he said, yes, yes, I know about this, but he said, what I'm going to tell you now, which you probably don't know, is that there were 1,200 serious injuries and 1,100 of them were to the police. <laughs> How brilliant! But that's what they do. They look you in the eye and they just they lie. lie and lie and lie and think. Well, we've seen that here in one minute. Okay, um, and the, the idea of having the children, the kids wearing these T-shirts, resist. Are we going to see that? Can you tell us in the concert? Oh yeah. Yeah, Peruvian children. Of course, yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah, we have. I use local children wherever I go. Mm -hmm. and they uh, must love it. Yeah, they do, and and I make certain that 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 by and large there's there's always come from some problem area or whatever. So how how, how do you do that? You work that with a, the, your team. Um, I have a, an advanced team who source source kids for me, mm -hmm. and then we uh, we send advanced material so that they know roughly what they're going to do. I don't see them until the afternoon of the show, and I work with them for about half an hour. Mm -hmm with an interpreter, and so that they, but in working with them, even for a short amount of time, you know, um, I, 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 I watch them, check. sometimes they're a bit frightened or whatever, and I'm quite tough with them because it's really a measure of my respect for them as human mm. beings, even though they're smaller than me. <laughs> they're human <laughs> beings. How old are they, more or less? Uh, they could be anything from five or six to 15 or 16. Oh. We have no, there's no kind, no, no real limit. Um, but I think by the time we've worked, even for the half an hour, they've understood two things. One, that I'm serious about it. But two, they trust me. They, are, they, they get, they can feel that I care about them and that I want them to do really well. And that the audience is going to adore them and that they have that they're actors, they're professionals, you know, so that's, that's the way, yeah, so they get, so, 
it's really great to see um, afterwards, of course, they're relieved, they're always ecstatically happy, because I, I was going to see them at a big love fest, which is lovely and whatever, but also they're proud of themselves. They're proud of themselves, and so we have to make our children proud of themselves. We do. Um, yeah, so of course, so there will be kids from Lima. Great, and um, you finished the last um, songs in your album are about love. I heard the one, Wait For Her, yeah. which is a beautiful song, and uh, you've spoken about the need to embrace love. And when we see all this uh, situation that's going on in the world, Mm. Is it fair to say maybe all we need is love? Uh, to quote the great man, yeah. uh, if it were, I've no idea which one of them wrote that song, <laughs> but yeah, wh whichever it was, or even if they did it together, yeah, they were, they were kind of right about that. Although that was back in hippy dippy daydom, you know, where, where, where people were a bit less specific and where there was a lot of dabbling in. Uh, the idea that the Maharishi might hold the key or that psychedelic drugs were good for you or any of that stuff. Yeah. We live in a far more pragmatic world now where we need to express our love for others by opening our borders and by trying to stop going and bombing brown people for money and, and, thing, and trying to wipe out corruption in government and to, to stop bowing down um, at the altar of uh, the accumulation of wealth, to change laws that say the only responsibility, for instance, corporate law in the United States, the only responsibility that a corporation has is to its shareholders to create the largest possible profit. That, they don't have any civil, civic, or humane responsibilities at all under corporate law. You None. regret you regret that people that go to your concert have to pay money and not everybody that wants to go I, can I, go. I, I absolutely. And that you have an experience in Mexico in the Zócalo, in Mexico City. And how can wonderful that was that? Repeated? Then well, again? well this this depends upon local government. Well we have a new mayor. Listen, I you know, we we're, we're, we're doing this show we're doing in a couple of days here. Um, it's a strange anomaly, um, but I'm told we've sold the expensive seats and we can't sell the cheaper seats. But the cheaper seats are like, they're still like 40 bucks or something like that. And we go, well, people can't afford it. So, I mean, I can't go into it in great detail, but I am in negotiation with the promotion people to try and see how we can get more people in the show. The Zocalo idea, um, when we did that show, we did two shows in Foro Sol, which is a 60,000 seat football stadium, with people paying in the pouring rain. They were lovely, they were great show. And then, two days later, October the 2nd, I think it was, um, 2015, I think it was. We played to about 300,000 people in Zocalo and the surrounding streets, and it was beautiful. I mean, that's my, that's my favorite show that I've ever done, ever. Anyway, it was that show in Zocalo Square. Did you ever think that the wall, this idea about a wall, would be so prophetic that we will still be talking about walls? Um, no, I didn't. But, you know, we, we, we live in a tiny blink of time. <laughs> Gone. Um, this last couple of years, year, hundred years, is like <laughs> since the French Revolution, um, which was hugely significant and important. I, be, I talk about this a lot in my BDS talks about uh, the history of the idea that human beings have individual rights at all. Because before the Enlightenment, before the, and before the 18th century, before the French Revolution, um, they had managed to maintain the idea of the divine right of kings. 
very primitive idea, which is what feudalism you know, is about. But as God, which I think is a very primitive idea too. I know I'm in a minority. Um, it's very at the bottom of the garden. But, so there's God, and then there's some guy who God says, you're the king, and you're the only one with any power. And you maybe goes out to a few noblemen, but a very, very few. And then you should beyond the church to support this idea. And um, it took until 1789 for that idea to be challenged. And it was, eventually. I write about it in my opera that I wrote about the French Revolution. Um, you know, um, something cooling in the crucible an idea forms. Uh, something, a, a, a nugget of belief in the hearts of the poor that maybe in the dawn's new light they have a right to the law. I, f I get a little bit shivery because yeah, yeah, I wrote those words and, um, and I, believe, I believe in them. And they, but that is what happened in Paris in, in, in 1789. Now that you're here, we're going to have more time to talk to Well, you know, the poor right? should have a right to the law now. Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't are you, they? Are you and they don't. Yeah. They don't. You know, we get the judiciary is packed with uh -huh. people who are interested in well, profit. Well, we are, we, are, we are having a judiciary crisis. Just finally, Roger, <laughs> please, in the middle of one. Uh, why us and them? The well, title. Why us and them? The title. Well, there's a. It, that's a song that I, I wrote. That's, that's a song I wrote to some music that Rick Wright wrote. In fact, back in 1972 or something. Um, and there's a line in it, uh, in the third verse. Um, and the line is, um, uh, with, without, and who'll deny it's what the fighting's all about? Well, the answer to that question is. Almost everyone will deny it. So I'm trying to spread the message that it's this enormous gap between North and South, rich and poor. That is what the fighting's all about. But actually, the fighting is all started by the resistance, isn't it? But the oppression, the hegemony, the colonial wars are started by people who want to accumulate wealth. That is what it's about. And the fight back, such as it is, um, is about just what I've just said to you now. It's about ordinary people, and particularly the poor, feeling that maybe in the dawn's new light, they have a right to the law. So we have to form laws that give poor people rights as well as rich people, i.e. We, we shouldn't be doled out a life under a law or under the law based upon our race, religion, nationality or our economic circumstance. And at the moment, we are discriminated against on the basis of almost all of those things. So I'm going to send you a picture of my pig, but I'm so glad that you quoted me what's written on it, because I couldn't have quoted that translation. Even, even now, some uh, a cl a club of fans of yours said that they would love to see the pig saying, Fujimori, nevermore. Saying what? Fujimori, Fujimori, nevermore. Well, we'll write it down. I'll write it down for you. Because okay. okay. it'll, uh, it'll be okay. on the pig tomorrow, okay, right, or sure. whenever we do I'll it. I'll write it. And also... This I is how I find what to write on the okay. pig. People okay. tell me. I mean, I'm a journalist, I, but, but I, I tell ba, ba, you, this ba, ba, is ba, what ba. The, your uh, fans you know, say. Th this is how I discovered that um, there's a certain um, amount of uh, a miasma, a fog about the way the Russians feel about themselves and about the country yeah. and about Putin and about all of that. It's, I was doing a gig in St. Petersburg and uh, I explained to this young lady who was working for Promoter, I wanted to find out something like that I could write on the page, something that was seditious or was dissent or something. Yes, she said, uh, we all find out, you know, so. so um, it's getting late, it's half past five and there's nothing on the pig. I went, what's, what's the, no, I have perfect slogan. I went, well, what is it? You know, and she said, no, it's perfect. What is it? And she went, okay, you will love. And what? It is, go Russia. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> no, you have Anyway, she went away and an hour later she came back and now she said, now I have perfect stuff. What is it? Zenit St. Petersburg for European Cup. <laughs> I mean, I said, no, I want something like killing dissidents with uh, poison uh, umbrellas is, is yes, wrong. Yes, you know, yes, something. Yes. <laughs> anyway, we ended up with some stupid pun about Pushkin. <laughs> Today there's a match Peru is playing. Where is it? You wrote it. Ah, I, 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 I okay. Okay. write it right now. Yeah, but I have yeah, to yeah. tell you that Peru is playing today, our soccer team, and I understand okay. you're a huge fan of soccer, of yeah. Arsenal. You have yeah, been a goalkeeper. They, they are playing with uh, Ecuador and they are fans of yours and they would love you to have a t-shirt from the team. So I'll give it to you okay, great. afterwards. Okay, great. So yeah. I'll send you this uh, message if you're interested. It uh, comes from your uh, fan club, but you might think of okay. other, other messages also. Roger Rogers, thank you so much. My heart will be in two places because I'm involved in a, in a life and death legal struggle in Ecuador for fighting Chevron for mm -hmm. reparations to the people who live in the uh, rainforest, the Amazon okay, there, uh, whose lives have been destroyed by... Las Unitas. By Texaco and Chevron. Yeah. So we're very involved in that fight. Anyway, that's another story. Thank you so much for your time. Not at all. Thank you. For this interview. Thanks, Roger Waters. Thank you.